In today's video, we're gonna do our very first ever critique on this channel. If you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, if you could please go ahead and do that now and also sign up for notifications, that would be great. And if everybody could give me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. That way more people could find this video. So like I said, this is the first ever critique on this channel, but I have been doing them on my online learning platform, The Academy with John Gress. And if you're interested in checking those out and our exclusive videos, you can go to johngress.com academy and sign up for a three-day trial. A few weeks ago, my friend Gary Hughes and I did a critique on his YouTube channel, and this week we're gonna do it on mine. Gary is a fantastic commercial portrait and headshot photographer. He also has a great YouTube channel and a fantastic podcast called Photobomb, and I listen to it every week. It's hosted with Gary and his friend, Boo Ray Perry, and it's just sort of like two dudes chatting, talking about photography, what's new in the news and what's new in their life, and it's really entertaining and a good time all around. So if you guys could check that out, that would be great. So in the critique today, we're not gonna identify any of the photographers. We're just gonna go over their images. We're gonna talk about what we like about them. And we're also gonna give tips and pointers on what could be done to improve them. And I'm really glad that Gary has agreed to come on today because he always gives great feedback and I'm really looking forward to it. So let's go ahead and connect with Gary. Hey, what's Is going that... on, John? Thank you for having me on your channel. Oh no, thank you so much for doing this. I had a lot of fun when we did it a few weeks ago. So let's go ahead and pull up that first image, if that's okay with you, and we'll get started here. Ready to rock and roll. Yeah, let's do it. So I really like this black and white portrait uh, with the shadow falling on the wall. One thing I could see, which would make this a little bit better, which sort of reminds me of that album, is that um, just to have a little space here between his elbows and his body, and that way more light could come through, and that would sort of create more of a dynamic shadow in the background. What, what were you thinking about this one? Now, right away, I think it's very striking, great subject, um, really great use of harsh lighting. A lot of what, what I do is trying to please people in this space where I'm creating a soft and flattering light as possible. So the lighting's really appropriate for this great subject. If I had uh, two critiques of this, just a couple of notes. I think that the shadow works really well. I think I'd like to see a little more of it, although it's a great way to add a little depth to a portrait that would have otherwise just been on a gray wall. And I think if you take this guy and maybe even cinch up the jacket a little bit, you might get that space you're looking for in the elbows. In addition, the tie from style, the styling point of view, and this may be nitpicky, but elevating your work is all about being nitpicky, is, is a skew. It's not straight with that gig line, is what they call it in the military, when that tie matches the line Wait, what of your they buttons. Call it? The gig line, it's called a gig line. Okay. And so it's like the tie goes straight down with the line of the shirt and goes right into the line of the trousers. And that's, it's all supposed to be pretty straight. Because this is a shot, you have the juxtaposition of a really rough looking character with a really dapper style. And I'd love to see that style carried through in those small details. Other than that, I think it's a really strong image. Yeah, I guess as long as we're nitpicking styling, also maybe having the cuffs of the shirt just sticking out like a quarter of an inch or a few millimeters would, would probably work better too. So I think that's, but I like what you said about the contrast of the, the character and the clothing. I, I think that's Actually, what I said really juxtap well. I said juxtaposition. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> you gotta use big words when you're doing a critique because even if your critique isn't good, people will think that you're smart. Oh, well, that's, that's a good idea. I'm gonna, it's a good I'm gonna practice really hard at that. So <laughs> let me see what big words I can come up with now. Um, hmm, hmm. Why, why can I only think of two, two syllable words right now? Or three syllable yeah. words, character, hmm. <laughs> so get, I really- Get, get, uh, get a thesaurus, <laughs> you'll be fine. Let me pull one up. So I, I like the rim lighting here in this one overall. It is stronger than I normally would, would think about having my rim lighting, but I think it works really well. And of course, having the shiny jacket, I think really enhances it more. Um, but I, I just like it. I like this image overall. Um, maybe closing the jacket a little bit to have a little less uh, skin might frame the face better, just sort of like creating a V there. A lot of times when I'm 
shooting uh, people like business people wearing suit jackets. I'll have them button the top button. And that way there's just a nice set of lines. I don't know, what were you, what were you thinking, Mr. Big Words? <laughs> well, I don't have any big words at the moment, but if I think of any, I'll let you know. I think this is a really okay. strong headshot. To me, it looks like an actor headshot, shot in kind of a cinematic style. And the strong hair light, which is also falling on the shoulders, the edge, the light from behind, is doing a really good job of making her pop off of an otherwise mostly flat background there. The expression is great. I like the low angle of attack to give her power and presence. So there's a lot going on here that I think is good. I, I would really like to see this light on her a little bit more directional. And I know that in an actor headshot, directional lighting isn't always the done thing. But if you're already going in on cinematic, look at her bone structure. Look at her cheekbones. Look at her jawline. She is such a striking subject. And this light doesn't really show how great she really looks. I would love to see what this looks like, modeling her face slightly more by bringing the light to one side or the other. In addition, I think that I'd love to do, just like you said, I love it when the lapel rests on the neck rather than having a gap there. There's a certain sense of wearing your dad's jacket when it looks big like this. And I think that that would really, really help this out quite a bit. I would consider changing the angle a little bit because I do think that the highlights on the leather can get a little bit distracting. If you move the angle of the light slightly to sort of feather across, you'd get the same effect. And, and the brightest thing in the image are the highlights on her shoulders. And so when you're working with leather or shiny materials, that is gonna be a danger there. So you could either feather your light, you could use a BOGO if you have something like a piece of cloth available, and make sure that in an actor headshot especially, that the face is the star of the image and that your eye isn't gonna be distracted too much by other stuff that's going on. I think it's really strong and I wish I'd taken it. Hmm. That's, that's interesting. I, I, I think I, I agree with everything you said. I, I think I heard somewhere recently a theory that actor headshots should be more limited depth of field because it would look like how they would look on camera and that model headshots should probably be stopped down more because it would be how you would do it like in a catalog shoot. Do you, does that ring true yeah, to no, you that, or how does? I certainly know that it's the convention. Depth of field is subject to the, the main factors are gonna be your focal length, aperture, subject background, distance, and the size of the sensor or medium that you're shooting on. So those are the four main things that are going to affect your depth of field. So it really is relative to just say shoot wide open, stop down. And ultimately, a headshot is about the face, and as long as the mask of the face, this area is completely in focus, even if the ears fall off a little bit, I find it's a really good way to manage distracting backgrounds. Because in the headshot, again, you want to get to the face. And it's cool to shoot on location, but when you're shooting for an agent or shooting for a submission for a role, the only thing that matters is the face, the expression, and then everything else is a suggestion that to support it. And I think that's really well managed in this particular image. As far as modeling images, if you're shooting something for print or catalog work, I mean, I'm at F8 minimum, sometimes F11, F16 for the most part. There are exceptions, there are exceptions to every rule, but in an actor headshot on a full frame camera, I start at 2.8. And if I'm a, a modeling image, it's three quarter length, full length, I'm, I start at F8. And that's just, that's not what I do every single time. It's just a good starting point. So I used to always be at F11. It's kind of because I found that at some point, maybe four years ago, that in, I don't mean in headshots, I just mean like in general portraits. Like when I have these painted backdrops, they tended to look better stopped down. And then I was doing some lens testing over the last six months, and I knew this, but I guess I didn't quite, it was just academic to me. I hadn't really experienced it. And I shot uh, like my 85 at every f-stop just to see what the difference was. And it was pretty surprising that overall it was much sharper at 5.6 and eight, and then it just sort of started to fall off a cliff. So, um, whereas sometimes I would go up to 16, now I'm sort of like, uh, I don't know. But I, I yeah. sort of come down uh, in, in that zone too. Um, 
Yeah, I don't think shooting but, an F-16 or F-22, uh, like, again, I would get into F-16 or F-22 if I would needed a modeling shot and I was going closer, whether it be a product or a person, because the closer you get to that subject, the more you're going to exaggerate the depth of field. The further away your camera is, F-16 F F and F-8, as far as your subject being in focus, are going to be pretty similar by the time you're all said and done with it. So it's just managing your, realizing that your subject, background, distance, relationship, camera, distance to subject, those things are, are going to change how you should approach it. And it's not the same in every situation. Now, that's a good point, because I think, too, when you're closer, it doesn't matter if those fine details are less sharp because you're stopped down uh, really far. That's when something called diffraction kicks in because they're huge in the frame. So they're gonna be sharp enough in the right. end for most, uh, most applications. So right let's grab the, the, the next photo here. And uh, it was interesting, I was sort of exchanging uh, 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 messages with the maker. Did that sound sophisticated? That's what, the that's maker. what those, uh, the maker. That's what those critique uh, people to do, right? Or um, author sometimes, yeah, maker. <laughs> oh, the yeah. author. Oh, that's even more, uh, yeah, Ooh, that's, yeah, that's really rich right there. It's got gravitas, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I authored many photos the other day, many of them not good. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> so say we all, yeah. <laughs> so, so they were saying that their idea in general was to... Um, they wanted their actors to pop off of a sheet of headshots so that they would stand out when the casting director was looking at a bunch of images at once, that these particular actors would pop off the page. And I thought that was a, a different way of thinking about it because normally I like all of my accent lights, the edge lights and the kickers and so, far, so forth, to look like it's sort of window light that's reflecting off of an object and it's just creating a really uh, subtle highlight, sort of like the highlight that's on my hair right now. And I found their approach to having this sort of hot sun look to be uh, something, well, it actually was very interesting to me too because when I was just getting started 20-ish years ago, it was very common to have your hair light and your kicker brighter uh, than your main light. And over time, I think it just became more subtle. And I always thought that like everything should be subtle until I started this exchange uh, with the author. And uh, they, were, they were explaining to me their motivation. And I started to think about it and I was like, well, that, that, is, that is different than how I would do it. And I think it's, it's just a different style. And I hadn't thought about that application. How do, how no, do you I feel? I think it's completely valid. I mean, what an interesting and important conversation to have is that we get so stuck in a certain way of doing things sometimes as artists, as creatives. That authors. Authors. <laughs> as authors. As the author of this image. You know, we're just like, we start to just deride anything that's not the way that we do it. And that's the way it should be done. And anybody who draws a line I, in the I sand. I think this guy might talk like that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, anytime somebody draws a line in photography and says this is the way that should be done, I will delight in going and find somebody who does it not like that and makes it look really, really good. It stifles creativity. It puts bumpers on the lane. Like we absolutely don't want to do that. As long as to me it looks like that the creator of the image is in control of what's going on. C photography is about. Good photography always has intent, and as soon as you learn the intent of something, then you can start to at least understand it instead of sort of just, you know, uh, hate it and, or think that it's bad. And, and this is a great example. This is a very hot edge light, hotter than I would typically use, but that doesn't mean that it's bad. I, I see this type of work all the time, and I really like harsh lighting on an actor headshot to create more of a character look. This guy, if you're a casting director and you see this, you know exactly who this guy is and what to do with him. And so it's a really, I think it's a good, and, and again, an image is all about the intended use. If it's gonna be an email signature photo, maybe you don't have to go in there and retouch the eyelashes since it's only gonna be 35 pixels. Like consider what it's for before you criticize it. And if you don't un 
and so many people criticize work that they just clearly don't understand. And some people who do bad photography always say, you just don't understand what I do. So it's, there's always a, keeping an open mind is important. I think this image in particular has great color harmony and color balance, great expression. And for the intended use, I think it's perfectly appropriate. The only thing that I would say is to try and watch those color values to where white will burn out as at, two, at 255 is that value where it just becomes zeros instead of ones. And there's some spots there in his hair where it just goes a little too bright. So might have backed, uh, just feathered it a little bit to get the hot highlight off the top of his head and to get the white hair to just have a little bit of detail in, it in that one particular spot. But other than that, I think it's perfectly appropriate for what it's intended for. Yeah, and looking at this image with this sort of hot edge light or rim light just makes me think that maybe I should mix it up next time and try this and not always try to recreate the sort of indirect window light look. It just could be fun to mix it up. So let's go ahead and check out this next headshot. And um, I, I actually, I, I like the, the retouching on this overall. Um, I could see where maybe his, uh, his tie, uh, the knot of his tie, maybe just be brought up a little bit. And sometimes I'll clone that in post just to cover um, that part up. And then also like for styling, I'll try to keep the tie in line with the buttons. I forgot what you said earlier. The, the gig military line. term yeah. was. The gig the line. Gig line. Yeah. yeah, so his gig line, he got fired from his last gig, it looks like, because yeah. it's a slightly off, <laughs> terrible joke. But that's sort of what I'm thinking. What do you what do you think with this one? Well, actually, what's interesting about doing shots like this, this is kind of my bread and butter, is that when you turn somebody off to the side, even a very straight tie can look askew. So that may have oh, well that's been a good point. perfectly straight. So if I'm shooting off center like this, I will very often make the tie go askew in the other direction back toward the camera so that it looks straighter. I think it's an optical illusion because I don't see the line of his shirt. I don't see the buttons. I don't see the seams. So I think that it is straight, but when you turn somebody, you can make that adjustment. Again, it's nitpicky, but it's, yeah. it's, it, it can make the image look a little more together. Um, just line up the center of the tie with the top button of the jacket as it's buttoned, and then it will look straight uh, from that. Just make sure it looks like that from that angle. As far as a couple of things, one, I like the, the lighting. It's a kind of a modern light. You got just the right amount of kicker to sort of highlight his cheekbones, which are really nice. There are a couple of things I think could be done to improve this image, and they're, and they're minor. The first is that I feel like the expression isn't hitting here. I think that um, it's just kind of a standing there kind of expression. And I know expression is so subjective, so that this may be a good expression on him. But for me, it's not quite as he looks so polished and together and powerful, I would love to see that in his face. So a little more coaching to draw out the right expression to send the right message. A professional headshot, a professional portrait is all about how it makes the person looking at it feel. And I think that this could have a slightly better connection. The other thing is that like me and most other men over a certain age, we tend to carry a little bit more weight than we want to. And although I think his styling and posing are, are, are slimming to him, I don't think that the position of his body and head are flattering to his neck. And in my experience with headshots, the, the neck, the jowls, the double chin are all something that men are very, very concerned about in photos, and myself included. And when you position somebody like this with the camera shoulder that's closer to the camera and the head turned back to that camera shoulder, you very often get an exaggerated sense of the roundness of their face because the, the neck and the chin tend to fold over the collar. And so if you basically shift his weight to his right side, camera left, onto his right foot, camera left foot, and, and tilt his head slightly away from that collar, you'll take the weight of his neck off the collar and it'll look a little more flattering. And very often, because I don't want an image to always look like somebody's going through it diagonally or don't want to make it look like an old school life touch school picture, um, I will also compensate by adjusting the angle of my camera so that he appears straight, but you still get the same effect of that neck coming off the collar. Yeah, and that's great. The only other thing I would add is uh, back in old, olden times here in the Yankee States when you could touch people, I would go up there and I would just sort of grab his uh, tie. Sometimes the, the, the knot will be off when you're at an angle. Right. And you just sort of need to pull it over towards the camera a little bit uh, when they're 
when they're turned to the side sometimes. So right on, yeah. Not, yeah, not, I don't see it with this image, but when you were talking about the tie, that, that made me uh, think about that. So, um, yeah, so here's another photo of the same uh, gentleman. And as far as the, the lighting goes in this one, I would like to maybe see a vignette. Well, sorry, I didn't start off with the good. So I, I think it's very uh, successful image of Roland that it's well lit and uh, uh, the retouching is nice. I might like to see a little more um, saturation. It feels like the color is not as realistic in his skin tone as it could be. Um, and I might also like to add just a little vignette on the corners to sort of uh, bring that down a little bit to sort of force us to look inward. Um, what are you seeing uh, with this image? Well, I'd start out by saying that I think it's all, all in all, the effect is really pleasing. I'm sure that the client here was, was, was thrilled with this image. The expression is much stronger than in the other image that we saw. It's got a little more of a kind of a, a, a glib, kind of cocky, confident sexiness there that I think is, is really flattering to him. So kudos on the expression coaching. The pose is overall very nice. Again, I'd like to see his body four or five degrees more straight so that you could tilt his head and get that neck off the collar. Um, because of the just the way he's built and the height of the collar on that beautiful shirt, I think that you're losing the length of his neck. And, uh, and I'd like to see that extended a little bit more rather than hunched over and having the neck on the collar. And f there are two more small points that I'd like to make. One is that the crop, if this was shot this way, I think the crop going through the ankle is sort of missing out. A guy who styled this nicely and who clearly takes pride in his appearance, and you took the trouble to get one of his shoes in the photo and not the other. With a modern high resolution camera, the difference in what it's gonna cost you to crop versus the payoff of him being able to see both his expensive, beautifully polished shoes in the photo would be a really big win if you do that. So you can always crop in later, but cropping through a joint is almost always jarring visually. And so I would have cropped it and left the foot in. And if I was gonna crop in close, I'd crop both feet out probably and not just one. I just like to have more to work with there. There may be another one in that same sequence that, that in fact does. So that may be a, a, a nitpicky thing. As far as the Pose goes with the hands. I think that I'd love to see a little more refinement in those hands, either bending of the wrist, a slight curl of the fingers in his right hand, camera left, and maybe bringing that left hand, camera right, even more around the wrist, just so you don't have such a large flat surface. I'd like to see a little more texture, and it may have been uh, he's got a unusually smooth, veinless hands, and I and I think that sometimes that flatters the client and, and that's something that people ask for but I also it seems very smooth I would just look at that and make sure that th that didn't get over retouch but a little more refinement hands should never be hanging you know they should always be like a loose fist or something that looks like stairs rather than just a, a you know a bunch of fruit hanging there and I think a slight curl of the pinky and, and the ring finger and a little more wrap around of the left hand around the right wrist would have refined the pose just a tiny bit. But again, that's nitpicky. I think the overall effect here is really pleasing and the client was probably thrilled. Yeah, that, that's something I had to learn through failure was not to, don't have a tall person hang their hand between their legs. Uh, yes. <laughs> with it like on one side. So like now I'm always seeing it all the time after I've started to notice this, like, just have them pull their wrist back so that it hits their thigh and then it's it's sitting on something. But just this, especially with a tall person with a big hand, just it looks gigantic. So Yeah, hands that... tend to be the same color as 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 your face and about the same size as your face. And they're usually closer slightly to the camera than your face. So they end up looking abnormally large and so, you know, just keep that in mind that you want to not necessarily hide, but you want to really refine the hands and, and get everything else in place and let the last thing that you do before you start coaching your client's expression is refine those hands so that they look elegant and purposeful instead of just slapped into the image. Yeah, and I think what you were saying was sort of to have them uh, roll the grip so that it's not, so that we're looking at it where everything is in a wave rather than rather than tight. 
Right. Yeah, it is it is yeah. almost always preferable to use the blade of the hand in a photo instead of the flat of the hand. Because then you don't have to worry about the veins and the and the knobbiness. Just a little bit of that. Instead of that, give me that. And I think that you're gonna be in much better shape. Great. Let's see what we've got next here. So I, I really like this headshot overall. The lighting is well balanced. The background is not too hot, but it's wide enough. There's a nice shape on the subject's face. I just wish, I, and I like the catch lights too. I just wish that the expression could be just a little more, uh, perhaps it's just too flat for me. Maybe just a little more warm or inviting maybe. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I had the opposite reaction to the expression of this image. I really liked it. He's got kind of like sad puppy dog eyes and he's just, he's a guy who's clearly like in his 40s, you know, maybe older, I don't know. He's a, he's a nice looking guy, but he's got such a great face. And he's got these eyes that turn down at the corners and they just got kind of a, like he's got this rueful kind of sadness to him. And I really enjoyed the expression. I thought that the broad lighting was a really interesting choice here. Uh, I like that it's not overly retouched and stylized, so you can see a little bit of the age in his face. Um, I thought that it was overall a pretty strong image, and, and there's not much I would do to improve it, but I think that it's all gonna come down to the intended use of the image. What's the expression for? If this was an editorial about someone who is, you know, living on the street, and that's a great expression. If this is him trying to get you to shop at his bike shop, then you probably need to work on the expression a little bit. So without knowing the specific intended use of the image, I really think the expression is hard to judge here. It might be perfectly appropriate. But having that conversation about how subjective exp expression can be and how you have to tie the expression to the intent of the image, I think that's an important conversation to have. And in case you guys are wondering, broad lighting is when you turn away from the light, and then short lighting is when you turn towards it. So just sort of, yeah, I, and it's, that was it, new. It's, it, it's, it's interesting to me too that as far as lighting, broad lighting and short lighting goes, a lot of times it just depends on where the photographer's standing. You know what I mean? Like if this, right, absolutely. If this photographer takes three steps to the left and rotates his camera 15 degrees across, you know, to the right, now he's in short light without moving the subject or the lights at all. So it's just sort of a catch-all term, meaning that the, the part of the face the camera is pointed at is where the most light is hitting. And narrow lighting is you're shooting into the shadow side of the face, wherever the light happens to be coming from. So it's, it's almost more about where you can move the lights around and turn this into short lighting without moving the camera, but you can move yourself and have the same effect too. Yeah, a lot of times I'll just move and say to them, oh, just, just follow me over here sort of thing. So that, Yeah, that's changes the light tip. completely just to move yeah. yourself, you know? Yeah, so, um, all right, so we've got this. I like the, the white balance of this one overall. I think her hair looks really nice and everything. Um, it's, it's interesting. I like to layer backdrops behind the subject completely. I think it's interesting that the author chose to have um, her hand going, um, being obscured by this backdrop. And I might like to see a little more separation between her dress and the background just so that she, and this is just a luminance issue, so that she's just more separated from the backdrop. So maybe, um, I was going to say moving it, <laughs> moving it closer, uh, but it, she's on it. So if you moved it closer, if it were further away, it would become brighter. Um, so that one's gonna take a little work and maybe the styling and the clothing to get that separation isn't gonna, I mean the styling and the backdrop, maybe that's not gonna work to get that separation uh, with these two items that are similar luminance. What, what were you thinking? Well, just to, to add to your point, I think that you could go back into the raw file and more likely find some shadow detail there. You know, if, if, oh, there, that if is there's a good point. And yeah. so, you know, just pr how you process the images is, is critical. And being trained as an old school portrait photographer, you know, I'm always looking for blown out highlights and blocked up shadows. It's just because, you know, your mentality is always thinking, I have to print this. And so if you have to print this, this won't print. You send this to an editor and they're going to be like, well, the whole middle section of the image is just a big block. And so although I love the, 
the feeling of this. It has a mood of mystery, sexiness, um, expression works. I think everything's really good here. If you put a just a piece of white foam core behind that blue background on the right side and between it and the subject and almost butted up against that gray background on the back, you would have gotten enough fill to do all the work here, even if you didn't have the shadow detail in the raw file. So I, I actually don't mind the fact that she's, it looks like she's walking out through a door almost. And I think okay. that, and, and as an editorial image, if this were a celebrity and this was an article about how she's leaving Hollywood or something, it perfectly gives the impression that she's walking out a door. So, you know, again, intent is everything. My main thing was, I think that the door is almost out of key with the rest of the image and it draws a lot of attention because of the weight of it. If you think of an image in terms of everything in the image, you assign it a weight. How heavy is it in the image? I think that it's a little too heavy. I would love it to be darker and less saturated a little bit. Um, and maybe you're, you're even- You're talking about the, the lighter blue panel. Yes, the lighter blue panel. I'd almost like to see the lighter blue panel and the gray panel reversed. That would solve your separation that's, that's problem. That's just what I was thinking. It, it'll yeah. solve your separation problem and it'll solve your, your problem with the big blue thing being in the front. And although I and think it's, it's- Go ahead. And if the lighter blue thing is too bright once you get it back there, you could just move it back a little bit uh, to the right distance so that she still is off, comes off of it, but it's not so overpowering if the author was intended for intended it to be more dark and, and moody overall. You could get there just by pushing it back a little bit. Yeah, totally. Again, I love the feel. It's, this image has great feeling, great storytelling almost, great design. So just a couple of technical things would take it to the next level. No, I think those are all really great points, Gary, in general. And I, I really enjoyed having you on today and giving all of this feedback. I think that um, hopefully this will all help and be very constructive. Uh, so thanks again for coming on today. And you guys, if you can make sure to check out his, uh, his channel, I'll definitely put a link to it. Um, below or on screen and uh and i will talk to you soon gary thanks for having me john it's good to see you man all right you too take care